So the Sox take two out of three from the Yankees, and they're coming home to play the Red Sox, who they just had beaten up in Boston. But the minute the Sox left Boston, I don't know if that was the wake-up call series that they had Mm. been swept at home, but the Boston Bats went nuts. And coming into the coming into the uh, White Sox series, they had suddenly been averaging almost eight runs a game offensively, which when the White Sox got there, they were like three and a half runs a game. Yeah. Um, and this goes back to something Hawk said on the air all the time. It's not who you play. It's when you play them. Yeah, we brought uh, it up and, we, the and we brought it up at the time. We, we knew the Red Sox were a better offensive team than what the Sox had faced. Um, and needless to say, uh, in a bookend, uh, they put up 32 runs, 16 in game one, 16 in game three, 16 in game one was <sighs> a, a game I attended on a whim. Oh. Uh, we had purchased tickets to a later game in the year, which also I, I, I getting things with my kids confused. So we exchanged the tickets and decided to go on Tuesday. You need a calendar or something. Well, like, I, I do. And that's, the, that's the thing. I have a calendar and I forgot to put this event in the calendar. So the it's all I'm as good as the user. Yes, that's right. If you can't remember to do something, then what it's a failure. <laughs> so anyway, so we end up at the game. Um, it's pretty cold out there. Um, we are on the first baseline. The reason I'm telling this story is we move. Because mm. it, it, it was, if you were away from the lake, it was like 62. If you were by the lake, it felt about 40 degrees. Yikes. So we end up moving uh, to a section behind home plate because nice. there's like no wind there. And we, there. we nestle in, there's no wind. And who do I notice? But it happens to be the player's wife section too. And there's Tim Anderson's wife with her, with their two kids sitting six rows in front of us, oh, which, wow. which was crazy. Um, and then some of the other players wives who I don't know over there, but the weird part about the story is Robin and I are sitting there and we're like, I wonder how long this is even going to last. Cause there's a security guard. And every time someone comes and sits down, this guy has been ushering them out. I don't know what was magic about Robin and I. Wow. I mean, this guy guy sat down behind us with his two kids. Wasn't going to hmm. cause any problems. And they kicked he, him he out? He kicked, kicked them out. Oh, jeez. Never touched us. Maybe Never he knew that you were previously undefeated in your visits to Sox Maybe. Park this year. Maybe word had gotten hoping around. Hoping for the, the PV rally there. Yeah, well, they were hoping for the PV rally. And well, one thing stuck <laughs> about my visits to White Sox Park, Vince Velasquez, I have now... This, this, this is news. I think this is news. I have seen Vince Velasquez pitched eight and two thirds scoreless innings with these wow. eyes, these <laughs> eyes, these <laughs> eyes. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I, I, I can't even believe it. That was the only pitching bright spot of the entire game. The thing I found hilarious about this game uh, afterwards, I got home, I was watching post game. I don't know why I wanted to torture myself any more than sitting through uh, yeah, that, that game, but they kept asking um, cease if he was tipping pitches. Like they wouldn't let up on it. Were you tipping pitches? Were you tipping pitches? But I had this crazy thought was the entire white Sox bullpen, except for Lynch, Vince Velasquez tipping pitches because the bullpen let up more runs than cease even let up. Yeah. And I just, like the the ball that Trevor Story, who is red hot right now, killed was a hanging curveball. It should have ended up in the seats. You're talking about just a bad performance by Dylan Cease, who missed his spots. He missed his spots, and they fucking hit him. Yeah, it's just he, he hit- I guess the press is looking for you know an explanation for his yeah. characteristic out 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 uh, outing that. Yeah, right? so- I, and yeah. I know. I just, it was funny. They just kept asking him over and over again though. And he's like, I don't know. We'll look they're, at the video and make adjustments. I mean, they're trying to give him an excuse. And they're yeah. To, I mean, he had he a bad say it, I guess, but yeah, I think he had a, you know, he was I, clunker watching it on TV and, and seeing where those pitches were. Well, no shit. He got killed yeah. by them, but the way they're hitting right now, and it's obviously the game opened up with a home run from Kiki Hernandez. He guessed high fastball. And he was going to swing no matter what he threw. If he threw him an 80 mile an hour changeup, it's a strike. He threw him a 96 mile an hour chest high fastball out of the park. Mm-hmm. So 
thankfully, Lucas Giolito looked like Lucas Giolito to a degree. He pitched around some traffic on the base pass in game two. They won 3-1. Uh, all offense provided by one Jake Berger recalled because of Lewis Robert going on the COVID list. I had just switched the channel to, to the Sox game when Berger went deep. Now, to me, the interesting storyline of this game was something that was pointed out by Benetti and Stone on the air that eventually must have made it down to the White Sox clubhouse. They noticed that Rich Hill was lining up to the third base side of the pitching rubber, not touching the pitching rubber. Whoa. So the that angle, is illegal. It is illegal. It is cheating. Is so that a block? The, uh, for the first four innings of the game, he pitched in that spot, and the Sox were being schooled by, a, basically, he's almost kind of like a junk baller now. I mean, mm -hmm. the ump came out. The Sox finally, someone either caught in the bench or I don't know if word makes it down. I don't know how that works. I don't know the legalities of that, whatever. And he had to move over on the pitching rubber which is the inning he did not make it out of. And Jake uh -huh. Berger hit the three run Homer. So Coincidence? I mm -hmm. think not, <laughs> but anyway, they salvaged that one. And then good old Dallas Keuchel, who's not long for this rotation, thankfully, because your oh. fantasy draft pick is heading back. He's starting his rehab assignment this weekend. Uh, got just shelled. Uh, by Boston, yeah, he's the not DFA, good. Hashtag DFA Keuchel, I think, is trending on. A yeah, these days. I, I mean, it, and the question is, do you do you try him out of the bullpen? Will he even respond to that? We talked about that. Yeah, we ago. don't. We we don't know. I think you know. have to because he's owed still eighteen million dollars. I think this year, let alone. Yeah. Um, I think you try him. Maybe. I mean, there's no reason not to try, but. I don't think his stuff necessarily plays well out of the bullpen, but it, maybe they could try him in mop up duty or something. I, I don't see how they can just DFA him and say it's all. Yeah. I, I just don't think the Sox would just DFA him. Uh, not with that much. I think, you know, they did DFA uh, Spanky at 8 million, but um, I, I don't eaten. Yes. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, if that high they would just DFA him. I have to have talked to him too, see what how he responds to it. I mean, maybe it's maybe it is the only way out. I don't know, but well, there he, seems to be maybe he's not willing to do it because there seems to be a little bit of you know you you've brought it up before. There's he's not necessarily seeing eye to eye with uh, Tony La Russa or maybe the front office where he wanted to pitch six innings in that other outing when he was finally having a good one and was upset about that. So maybe there is some. I don't know, a little bit of a conflict there. Yeah, and I mean, maybe, maybe that would be enough reason to DFA him if he's not willing to even go to the bullpen. If that, if that's, if that subject has been broached and he's just not receptive to it, that, that could be a reason why he would no longer be a white Sox sooner than later. Yeah. You have to question um, if a lot of that animosity of course does come from, which we talked about him not getting to that 160 innings and he wants to get there. <laughs> But he's not pitching to get there. So, no, I mean, he's not worthy of it. It'd be so. different if he is, if his ERA was like in the threes and they keep taking him out after five, exactly. right? Exactly. But it's, that, that's not the case here. That'd he be can't some even fishy get through, shit. he can't even get through two fucking innings. Um, just real quick, little highlights. The Sox have been taking a lot of pitches. The apparently the, the talk, the talk, the meeting is, is trending in the right direction. I, I think that's part of why they had success in that Yankee series getting down as much as they did in both of these Boston games. They, I mean, they scored seven runs last night. Uh, Andrew Vaughn went off. He had five of the RBIs, but like, I think the heading's coming around. They just got to get back to like consistent pitching to mm -hmm. not be stuck at 500 to win a game and lose a game, win a game, lose a game. Uh, they did end up beating Boston four two in the, in the series for the season. Thanks. Thanks to the, the middle victories.
Wordhole Media.